Hello everyone, so I'm Julien Nock from uh, Zetascale Technology and I'm working on the open source project named Eclipse uh, Zeno, so I will introduce you. So let's do a first quick introduction on, on what is uh, Zeno. So Zeno is similar to, is a communication middleware similar to DDS, MQTT, ZeroMQ, or a lot of other middlewares. But it has some specific features that make him very unique. Uh, at first, it supports, of course, regular uh, pub sub communication, publication subscription in a push mode. So you declare in your subscriber a callback that will receive all your publication made by a, another uh, distant application. But it also supports pull mode. So in this pull mode, the, all the publication will go up to the middleware of the subscriber, which will keep the latest publication in memory, and your application can pull this latest publication at its own pace, meaning that you will really uh, be able to, to tamper down your, uh, your flow of data on the subscriber side. It also supports um, a mode where you have uh, intermediate storage. So you can declare, deploy somewhere in your network a storage, which will uh, be configured to register all the publication made on a certain topic or a certain set of topics. Later on, you can have any other application using Zeno that can do a query to retrieve back uh, the, the past publications for any topics that have been registered by this storage. But as we also implement, yes, uh, query operation, we also implement uh, the way to, for you to declare your own queryable. It means that with Zeno, you can implement your own RPC, remote procedure call mechanism, on, based on Zeno. So you, on the query side, you perform a get operation. This get operation will go to your callback of your queryable. And in here, you can decide to reply with one or several values to your um, courier application. So in terms of deployment, Zeno supports a lot of various uh, deployment uh, topologies. The first is peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer -peer either in a click, where each peer is connected to each other peer, either in a mesh, when you have all not fully inter uh, interconnected peers, but some peers are able to root the data, publication, or queries from one peer to another peer if they are not directly connected. Another mode, of course, is brokering. Uh, Zeno implements um, a software router that we name the, the Zeno router, and your client, so your Zeno application client, can connect to this router, and this router will route all the publication and queries between the clients where it's uh, necessary to, to be routed. But of course, a, a broker can be a single point of failure. So we also support the routing mode uh, where you may have several routers interconnected uh, together and the router will route all the data from your client to the next router and then the next router to the client. And all of this model can be linked together with the help of intermediate router is each other. So you can really deploy a set of various routers all interconnected. You can deploy routers in, in the edge, in the cloud, in your local system, all interconnected. And Zeno will be able always to find the correct way to, to distribute your data, your publication from the publisher to the interest subscribers. Um, also, you can have uh, the client application connected to a peer, so um, the difference between a client and a peer in Zeno is that a peer can route, can route data between different peers, while a client is always connected to only one peer or one router. So it's more lightweight, a client is more lightweight because it doesn't embed all the routing mechanism uh, than, than a peer. So, Zeno implements its own uh, protocol. On this protocol, we carefully uh, design it to be able to run on various network uh, technologies. So only requirements we have is uh, something similar to a data link. So only to be able to send some messages uh, to, to, a remote, um, to a remote end. Uh, so on top of this, we, Zeno um, can build uh, uh, several different transports. So, so far we support TCP, UDP, QUIC, 
WebSocket, serial communication on a serial port also. We do, did already also some experiments with Bluetooth, and we will increase the Bluetooth support uh, later on. And uh, Zeno will adapt always to the network in the sense that it will um, adapt to the MTU. So it will do perform the fragmentation in case you send a payload which is greater than the MTU. Zeno will fragment the data for publication. And the other uh, side, um, the subscriber side of Zeno will reassemble all the messages in the single payload that will go back to your, um, to your subscriber listener. Zeno is mainly developed in Rust. But still, we provide, of course, the Rust API. But on top of this, we provide also Python API, C API, and we are working on C++ API, C Sharp API, and also Java API uh, soon. So for more constrained devices, uh, we also have a specific implementation of Zeno, which is named Zeno Pico, which is developed in C, pure C. And it can run on all of this hardware, so Arduino, ESP32, a lot of uh, micro microcontroller units. Zeno is also extensible. The Zeno router is able to load din uh, dynamic libraries that we are plugins mainly. So we developed already some plugins, for instance, for REST, to have a, a REST API over Zeno, where each HTTP put is translated into a Zeno publication and each um, H, uh, Zeno subscription is translated into a HTML5 server sus event uh, subscription. So you can really subscribe from your web browser uh, to, to Zeno and receive all uh, data from Zeno into your web browser. Of course, we developed uh, the um, plugin for DDS. That's the point of, of, this, of this talk. And with this, you will be able to integrate ROS2 ecosystem, DDS ecosystem into Zeno. We developed also a MQTT plugin recently. And for the storage technologies, Zeno supports different storage technologies, uh, such as InfluxDB. So you can have all your publications stored in a time series in InfluxDB and uh, retrieve all of this, your publication later. We support also RocksDB, which is a local key value file system, or just a simple uh, in memory hash map in the memory of the router. So, now the Zeno DDS bridge. This bridge is, is developed is quite uh, simply. Um, so let's imagine you have a robot so, uh, publishing some information on the topic slash IMU for all of the acceleration data uh, and so on, and subscribing, of course, to CMDVL to get the twist command to move the robot. In DDS, it means you will have a data writer on RT slash IMU, and a data reader on RT slash CMDV. So the Zeno DDS bridge embeds uh, uh, the Cyclone DDS library, so it can discover automatically the data writer, and it will create automatically a matching data reader, and also an associated route, which leads to a publication on Zeno on the exact same topic name, RT slash IMU. So as soon as there is a subscri subscriber on Zeno that is subscribing to this uh, topic, RT slash IMU, the data will flow from uh, the robot into DDS, into Zeno, and to your subscriber, wherever it is. On the other way around, for the data reader, when the Zeno bridge detects the data reader, it uh, creates a matching data writer with an associated Zeno subscription on the same topic. So as soon as there is a publication on Zeno on this RT slash CMD VEL topic, the data flows to Zeno bridge DDS and then to DDS up to, to the robot. But now what if we have several robots? Uh, they are both using the same uh, topic names. And with DDS, we don't want those to clash with each other in the same network. So usually, what you will do is you will use uh, the ROS localhost only equal one uh, environment to have all your DDS uh, communication scoped only to your robot and not going outside the robot. But still, on your robot, you can deploy the Zeno Bridge DDS and use a specific option, which is a scope. And Zeno will automatically add this scope as a prefix to the Zeno topic that is used. So for instance, the first robot is named, 
is using scope bot one. And it, all the, its Zeno publication will go on the topic named bot one slash RT slash IMU. The second one is bot two. So now what I can do in Zeno is to have a subscription using wildcard characters. The wildcard character, star star, means it's match any strings uh, in, in the topic. So subscribing on star star slash RT slash IMU, the subscriber will receive all the publications from the two robots. And then it can display the two information published by the two robots at the same time. While another publication, for instance, can be made for, uh, from a teleop uh, operation that will publish only on bot two slash RT slash CMD. And then it will drive only the robot number two. And it can change. The use cases of Zeno with ROS2. So the first one is obvious, I just explained, is really fleet management. Using Zeno, you can create a, a fleet manager that will uh, drive two different robots or more robots um, and subscribe to those robots. You can also deploy an influx DB database, for instance, to record all the publications or, uh, made by a teleoperation to a robot or the publication made by those robots itself. So in this example, for instance, we can imagine on the left to have a simulated robot um, with a scope uh, simu and another real robot with a scope real. So if a teleop uh, operation drives the simu robot, the simu robot will move and all uh, commands will be recorded in the time series InfluxDB. Later on, you can have a replay application in Zeno that will get all the commands from InfluxDB and replay all these commands, just changing the topic name to apply all the, the simulated commands to the real robot. Another use case, thanks to Zeno Pico, is to integrate uh, all kind of MCUs uh, with, with Zeno Pico. You develop your application on ASP32 with Zeno Pico, and you configure it to connect uh, to, to the Zeno DDS bridge or to a router which is connected to the Zeno DDS bridge, and you can send command to the robots or uh, as you want. The only thing you need is really to um, design your Pico application to send uh, DDS format uh, data, right? Uh, DDS encoding is, is named CDR, so your, your Pico application just need to build this CDR encoding uh, for your data and publish on Zeno, and they will be automatically transmitted to, to DDS and to your robot. Another interesting use case is cross one bridging. Let's imagine you have two different host to system, could totally disconnected behind possibly a NAT, what you can do is to deploy a Zeno router in a public IP, so on a, on a cloud, in a VM instance in, in a cloud, for instance. You configure your bridge, your two bridges in the two sub-network to establish a single TCP connection, outgoing TCP connection to your router in the cloud, and you're in, biz in business. All the publication from one ROS2 can go to the other ROS2 system. If you have uh, the possibility to configure the NAT to do port forwarding, of course, you don't need a Zeno router. You can establish a direct connectivity between your two Zeno bridges through the NAT. In the future, on our roadmap, we plan to also implement um, ICE and STUN protocol in order to be able to have a really uh, hole punching in, uh, in the NAT. So the Zeno router will be used as a stun server and you, your, the, the communication will be established automatically between the two bridges crossing the nuts. And last use case, of course, is integration. So we, we already have integration with web services. So you can uh, use a REST API to drive your robot or subscribe to your robot. We also developed a MQTT bridge. So we have a demonstration uh, in the booth um, with uh, a Zigbee button connecting uh, to MQTT, to the MQTT Zeno bridge, and then publishing the MQTT publication is going uh, to another application that translates the JSON into um, a DDS payload, a twist, and the DDS payload is going to the DDS bridge and driving the robot. So we can drive the robot from Zigbee. So, some demos. 
So those are the demos that we are running currently on the booth. We are in the booth uh, number 32. You can come and, and see, see the demos that we have. The first one is the fleet teleoperation. So uh, we have a real robot. On this real robot, uh, there is a camera. There is a DDS bridge which is running with the scope bot one. And uh, we have a Xeno application, which is a capture application, which just gets all camera frame one by one, encoding JPEG and publishing those uh, JPEG image to Xeno in a specific path. On a laptop, we have the gazebo simulation with the same TurtleBot uh, burger simulation, which with a different bridge, and this bridge is using the scope Simu for simulation. Both bridges are connected to a Xeno router, which is uh, hosted in, uh, in the cloud, in a Linode instance in, uh, in our server in Japan. And uh, this router is also hosting two plugins uh, for Xeno, the REST plugin for uh, REST API uh, of Xeno, and also the web server plugin, which allows uh, to transmit the, the camera frame in a motion JPEG uh, format. So, the demonstration we do, so here, from my phone, for, uh, my phone is connected to the, to the internet on a public Wi-Fi hotspot. I have this application on which I can drive uh, the robot remotely. So the commands are going to HTTP, to the server in the cloud, and then go back to the bridge in the robot. And here, my colleague is using the same application, but using the SIMU uh, prefix. And from his phone, is able to drive the simulation uh, of, of the robots in um, running on the laptop. And now, on my, uh, on my phone, I change uh, the prefix to use star star, which matches different, uh, the two passes. And when I uh, drive uh, the, when I push the button, I can drive the two robots at the same time. So you can see the latency is quite good. Actually, we have a latency of 20 milliseconds between uh, the booth, between the robot here and the server in the cloud. So there is really a, a latency of 40 milliseconds. So second demonstration that we have is a demonstration with ASP32 and a gyroscope sensor, which is connected here. So you can see on the little board there is an ASP32, and uh, on the upper right there, there is a the gyroscope sensor. So this one is, auto when booting, it's auto automatically connecting to the Wi-Fi, and the application, Zeno Pico application running on it, is automatically connecting directly to the bridge. So it's not going to, to the Zeno router. There is a direct connection. And from this one, when it's, uh, it's booted, uh, here it's booting and starting up, So you will see that I can drive uh, the robot just moving uh, the gyroscope. And here the communication is really local, but still the, the robot is still publishing all the videos on all the acceleration information into the router and you can see all the feedback in the, the HTTP page. Another demonstration we have on the booth that you can come and see is this uh, Zigbee demonstration. So we have the Zigbee button uh, connected to uh, Zigbee to MQTT uh, in a Raspberry Pi, and we have the, this uh, Zeno bridge for MQTT that is connected directly to the Zeno bridge with DDS. So when I press the Zigbee button once, the robot uh, turns on the right, and if I press twice, it turns on the left. Um, here is the demonstration. So, so this is a Raspberry Pi with a Zigbee key, and just pushing uh, on the button, the, there is a publication on Zigbee that is going to MQTT, and uh, an application is receiving this publication in a JSON format, just translating this in a twist and republishing on Zeno on the correct path for the robot. And the last demonstration we have on the booth is uh, record and replay. So in uh, the Linode, uh, in the cloud, we also deployed an InfluxDB database, 
with uh, Xeno Storage or just registering all the publications made on simu slash rt slash cmdvel. So all the publications made to move the simulation. We move the simulation and we can show that our reply application just do a get to, re to recover all the history of publication for the simulation and is able to replay all the publication for the real robot. So if you want to see those demos in live, and uh, have, if you have more questions and want to interact with us, you can join us on the Zetascale booth, number 32. We are here. We are ready, ready to explain you more details and show you the demo in live. Thank you. Thank you.